After going through the Fatal Labyrinth of lazy procrastination, I'm finally back with a quickie on Fatal Labyrinth on the Sega Genesis. Many hours of danger and excitement awaits you in this dungeon-crawling favorite. When the Holy Goblet is stolen and taken to Dragona, the Castle of Doom, it appears that all hope is lost for the world. As Tricar, you represent the last hope for mankind against Dragona's randomly generated levels. Battle its minions and retrieve the Holy Goblet. With success comes the eradication of this threat as you acquire the Holy Goblet and return it to its rightful place. Dragona's victory spells the end of all that is good and holy. You cannot let Dragona's minions succeed! Well, the description checks out. I mean, the world falls into darkness, go save our village by finding the plot device. So let's see what's so fatal about Fatal Labyrinth. Fatal Labyrinth is a randomly generated dungeon crawler where you make your way through each floor exploring its layouts, fighting monsters to level up, collecting loot and food to survive, and finding the stairway to advance to the next floor until you reach the 30th floor where you'll find the goblet and save the world. It's a pretty simple adventure game that kind of plays like a D&D &D game, and it is interesting enough that it has quite a lot of things going for it. The game is random, as the description mentions, so every time you play the game, its floor layout is completely random with hidden passages, and that's pretty cool for replays and very much a roguelike game if you're into that. But it's not just the floors that are random, the items can be random too, specifically the magic items like the canes, scrolls, and the potions. They never always do the exact same thing you last thought they did. The effects are randomly selected, so you'll have to try them all out to see the effects. But beware that sometimes the effects can be bad, like blindness, getting cursed or confused for example. You'll know when it's bad when you hear the downer music. Speaking of music, this game feels like it only has 5 tracks or so, and that's because it IS only just 5 tracks or so, and it has the most repetitive music I've heard. I mean, just listen to this. What the hell? It doesn't have a whole lot of variety with the sound, but as for the rest of the game, there's a lot of varieties with the enemies and the loot you can potentially find on each floor. You've got a decent list of weapons with pros and cons, armors and magic items to find and use, but like I said earlier, some items will have a negative effect in each playthrough, which actually isn't that bad considering you can just walk off most of them by literally just walking around till it wears off, which kind of makes the effects less threatening and almost pointless since you don't necessarily need an item to cure you, which there are. Know what else is pointless? The gold you can find. What's the gold for? You don't buy anything with it while in the tower, which would be kind of cool, but no. Guess what the gold is for? I had to look this up and it's apparently for when you die. Oh, life insurance maybe to pay death to play again where you died? Nope, you just get a nicer grave or game over when you die, and that's it. So if I'm not millionaire Batman, no one would come to my funeral? Those bastardly bitches! They're probably there to just grave rob my gold because if you have no gold, no one is there to attend. Not even your parents come to grieve about your death. Now that's just cold! By the way, who went into the tower and got my gold anyways? You're telling me someone made it to the floor I died on, which could be... Floor 30 where the goblet is and they just left with the money? I mean, if they made it to the floor I died on, couldn't they continue what I couldn't do? I mean, they were just as good, if not better than me, if they were able to get out. And you could have had a continue system where if you made it past a certain number of floors, a new hero will take your place. But the main point is, the gold is useless. So don't get discouraged if you lose money in the game from having the ninjas steal it. Yes, ninjas. This game has ninjas. In fact, many ninjas. Yeah, there are ninjas in this game that steal your money, worms that shoot acid that melt your equipment away, and magic users that cast spells on you like the typical fire, ice, lightning attacks, or the most annoying spells, the status effect spells. You constantly get hit by spells like sleep or the one that makes you feel like dancing. Or as I like to call it, the retard spell because it makes your character act like a retard when there are monsters around. Oh, what the f What? He couldn't have danced his way towards his enemies and hit them like that one martial arts that dances around and hits you in the face? Urgh, it's so aggravating. If they called it the confusion spell, it would seem less stupid at least. But I feel like dancing? This your dancing when I'm in danger! 
How would you like to feel my foot dancing right up your ass, you dumbass prick? There's no way to be immune to spells at all, you just have to hope you don't get hit by them, especially not in a room filled with monsters. There is an anti-magic cane, but I never got that to work right. Of course, with some good planning and strategy, you'll survive like my personal favorite, the Roroni Kenshin strategy, where you have a lot of enemies, but you lure them into a hallway to make it a one-on-one -on -one fight to not get surrounded and killed. Is there anything that would kill this game or be fatal to its gameplay? Well, I mentioned the music kind of sucks, especially being so repetitive. Same with the repetitive graphics that you'll see over and over again a lot of the times, but thanks to the randomly generated maps, it shouldn't bother you too much with the loot you can find as well. The controls are kind of stiff, but with the way the game is designed in the grid-like format is somewhat forgivable. Considering the monsters only move when you do, oh yeah, you attack by walking into your enemies like in Hide Like or Dragon Slayer, which seems dumb but makes sense in this type of game for simplicity. A map would have been nice on the pause screen, the menu could be better, I really hated having to re-navigate through the menu because there's no back out option. The idea of using the gold you find to buy something at a shop or something would have been cool instead of a dumb funeral. The lack of a save feature or password system to continue later is quite annoying even if it's only just 30 floors, though it's probably because of the roguelike elements. This game took me about 3-4 to four hours to beat it in one sitting with all the exploring, fighting, looting, and having to backtrack because I fell in a pit. But overall, if you like roguelike games or adventure games and you enjoy D&D but simplify, then this game is definitely worth checking out. CHECK IT OUT! While it has a few annoyances, I wouldn't let that stop you from playing the game. It certainly isn't fatal, and it really isn't that much of a labyrinth if you think about it. But with that said, I'm Wizro100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more from LazyWorks Creation. See ya! character act like a retard when there are mon monsters around. Let's start dancing when I'm in danger!